located at the end of Manal Boulevard. Many of many them, of them, them say, the, say hill the hill is haunted, is haunted by an apparition, by an, apparition by an old, an old man, man. However, however there, are many stories there are many stories about, about haunted, hill. haunted hill. Long ago, there was a hard-working man who had a, a terribly nagging wife. Uh, there must have been love. Where you marry her? Maybe she was like uh, twenty years younger than him, and just just decided to just smash his balls. But that's another story. Okay, she spent more money than he ever could bring into the household. Uh, and he didn't and make enough money. He couldn't cook. Out. He couldn't. He earned he couldn't everything. Fix anything. He was lazy. Day and, and night. And, night and, and uh, he was gone the during the week. Her nagging ensued, making a man's life a living hell. Uh, you know, you, you, you get what you pay for. He seldom argued in his defense. Oh, come on, man! For he had learned that it was only a waste of time and often made well, things worse. had one uh, blessing. Well, that would stop me too. He trapped game in the mountains during the week. That's why he was only home on the weekends. And he owned a small cabin. So this guy like had two houses. Oh, and he owned and a so small cabin. For trapping, I guess, up in the foothills. Paid the rent. That before or after We're going to go with it. Where he could have peace and solitude. He had a man cave. And after a while, and after a while, it no longer mattered if he even caught any sickness. He just sat up there, enjoying the blissful hours alone. And then occasionally he'd check his traps and and take some yelping poor crushed foot animal and and kill it and and then you know what else he would he would probably skin it maybe eat it then one weekend while he was preparing to leave for the cabin when the wife decided to accompany him I know that you're wasting time up there I bet that you do nothing but sleep anyway boy she must have been bored because you know this was back before MTV and and computer games so she decided she could accompany him how do I know what you do up there said the wife I'm going to keep an eye on you oh dear God the man was quite distraught too bad he wasn't straught but you know he was distraught he knew that his week of peace was doomed doomed as doomed could be he only hoped was that his wife would find the rustic conditions of the cabin so horrible that she would leave in the morning, or right away, or as soon as she could. Oh, but he was in for quite a disappointment. When the man and the wife arrived at the cabin, she went into full complaint mode. Oh God, this was just a new place for her to pick on him for. Oh. She, uh, you didn't pick this, you didn't do that. Uh, but, so she was the problem. And the metaphor is the trapping. Okay. Uh, she was staying and seen, and he f fixed up the place, and, uh, and she gave him things to do. He couldn't just lay about. I gave him, I knew it, look at that rat hole. You and your lazy ways. He couldn't just lay about. Oh, Gabby. I knew it. Look at that rat hole. You and your lazy ways. She harped at him. As only a harpy can harp. How many harpies can a harpy harp harp? She scattered about the cabin. What? With a disgusted look on her face. I guess you can scatter. I have traps to set, he protested. But the words fell a deaf ears because she had no idea what it meant. 
well, you can't set traps after dark. So that's when I'll have you clean the house or the shack or the cabin or whatever this is. For the next several days, the poor man labored. In the morning, he would set off to check his traps, enjoying the brief privacy that it gave him. In the evening, he would slug home and he would do the chores and fix up the cat. Look at that! Look at that! Oh, please, that kind of bed. Oh, you need to come out of this. Oh, I can feel the wind coming in there. Oh, look at that! Oh, there's the... Ever under the watchful eye of his beautiful and loving wife, totally accepting and compassionate, not... Finally, the day came when... I gotta trek... I gotta trek the traps! I gotta check the traps! So he had further traps. Go for the traps. He was going to have to overnight camp out under the stars in the dark. His wife complained and complained and never in his life that he looked forward to so much sleeping on the cold hard ground. Ooh, comfy, comfy cold hard ground. Ooh. Stay close to the cabin, she warned him. The royals around here just become mazes and the skeletons of, of politicians keep squeezing out. And it, it's probably easy for you to get lost. What? You're worried about me? I, I live up here. I trap up here. No, I, I can take it. How, how about you? How, can you take care of yourself? I can take care of myself and I'll wander whenever I want to. I warn you, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to shut you off. Stay close to the cabin. And I'll take care of myself and I'll do whatever I want. Once again, the man bit his tongue. Ouch. Quickly gathering his things, he left. His wife complaining. And then he could have do that. And why did he leave me? And I know what about my mother? And then could have been your mother. Oh, she didn't want me to love her. And you had money. You said you had money. Content in his solitude, the man took his time checking the distance track. Ooh, maybe I'll just do one a day, maybe two. So he pushed his trap hunting for another day. And finally, he set back, back to the cabin. And he got to the door. Hello? 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 He called out when he saw the cabin. But he did not hear his wife complaining. What's this? Hello? He swung open the door. Who in there? Oh, the place was cold, no fire, no meal prepared as if she would do that. Oh, dear God, she wandered off and got lost just like she said she would. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm finally right about something. <laughs> Feeling free and in good spirits, he lit a fire and began to make a meal. And he moved the kettle over to the fire, and suddenly a cool chill ran through his spine. There in the flames was the face of his wife, looking at him, looking, looking. He stared. He stared back, and the image spoke to him. Stuff in your face instead of searching for me, are you? You give me a decent burial, you lazy dog. I warned you. I warned you I was gonna cut you off. Burial? Find me. Burial? Find me, you sniveling lover. And the man threw water on, on the fire. Shut her up. The loud hiss. The fire spurred out and the head vanished. With a sigh of relief, the man sat at the table, alone once again. Suddenly, nobody. He didn't feel hunger. Could, could his wife be dead? Oh my God, he had, a, he had a heart. Somehow the thought made him feel odd. And Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. He suddenly felt happy. She's I'm happy. happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Then off in the distance, he heard a clap of thunder. 
The spring monsoon had arrived, and a wall of water came rushing down, exposing politicians' skeletons hither and yon. So, ah, he went back to bed until the storm passed. Then, then he would decide what to do. The rain violently shook the cabin, the wind howled and screamed. And it carried the voice of his wife going, Find me, you lazy dog, you snubber, find my body, I warn you. The man put his fingers in his ears and yelled back at the ghostly voice, Let me be. He started humming to himself. Ooh, mm. Mm. You Sullivan, you should find me, find me, find me, find me, find me, find me, the voice got louder, you're wasting time, get out there, find me, find me now, I warn you, I have to find the body of my wife. Uh, I have to really know she's dead and not just wandering around. Find me, find me, you lady. I can't rest until I find her. He walked out into the pouring rain. Find me, you silly son. The wife's voice wailed. The rain made it practically impossible to see, and several times he lost his footing, sliding down to the arroyos where the skeletons of the politicians reached at him. This is what must have happened, he thought. She must have fallen in a arroyo and died, or, or the politicians got her. Ooh, the wind picked up, the rain pelted, the body felt cold, making it difficult to know where his wife's shrieking was coming from. Find me, 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 you worthless bastard. The voice got louder and seemed to come from his left and he turned in his shovel and he fell into the arroyo and his lantern fell and, and he fell the bony. <coughs> I have to find the body of my wife. Uh, I have to really know she's dead and not just wandering around. Find me! Find me, you lady! I can't rest until I find her. He walked out into the pouring rain. Find me, you silly son! The wife's voice wailed in the distance. The rain made it practically impossible to see, and several